Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next war recap video, and this is the one against Egypt Killers. They had a very solid war they put up. You can see they even got one of our Town Hall 11s three starred. And as far as the Town Hall 10s went, for the most part, left those guys two starred, and they got the nines cleaned up. So a solid war to them. Uh, we actually didn't have our best war, to be honest. Uh, we left a lot of stars on the board that should have been gotten. But that being said, we still got the win by four stars. Um, a few of those 11s were left one starred, but we had some nice Town Hall 10 three stars. Uh, we'll take a look at some Town Hall 10 attacks, some Town Hall 9 attacks. Not a whole lot of Town Hall 11 action to show. But as you guys know, whenever I get the chance, I like to show... Um, all the different Town Hall levels, so hopefully in the future we'll have some Town Hall 11 stuff to show. But in this recap, we're just going to start at Town Hall 10. Uh, looking at Black Ice here, coming in on number 7 with a, well, an, a kind of an interesting attack here, but it's, it's it works for this base. You can see this is one of those bases um, that has the core that's set back in the, in the center that uh, is hard to access. But when you have both Infernos in the same compartment, Typically, you want to think Valks, especially for this type of compartment where everything's touching. You have the Expos, a lot of high-value stuff in that core. If you can get Valks in there and a few spells on them, uh, they will wreck that extremely quickly. It's just about funneling those guys in. So in a way, this is just an extension of the ring base, uh, which I, we've seen in countless live attack videos and even some like war recaps and base destruction. I've showed the ring base a ton of times. Um, so this is just the same principle. You're creating a funnel uh, with your queen on the right side here and then you're coming in on the other side to create the funnel with something else. In this case it looks like it's going to be the king and some bowlers. So the queen wall break uh, goes in with the wall breakers. Now there is a risk. She could have stepped up and targeted um, this expo right here because uh, it is within range. That, and if she did, the Inferno might have been able to reach her. But luckily, she keeps heading up towards the top of the base. She doesn't try to engage the core. And because of that, uh, she'll be just fine. Pops the ability. Uh, good awareness there to pop the ability because he was he was dropping stuff on the left side too. He also just gets the King's ability in time. Probably a little bit late because the King goes down well before his ability is up. But at least the ability went down. So difficult to do everything at once. But for the most part, the deployment's good. Uh, and the funnel is not great on the other side, but it's enough. He'll drop drop down. Um, actually, he doesn't have a jump. He just lets the Valks go through the wall here. So taking a little bit of a risk in that sense because there's two walls they have to go through. Um, that one freeze was unnecessary, I guess, because the Valks move so quickly. The freeze typically isn't even needed. Um, you can see right here, the, luckily there's one wizard in the core to take out the all those things in the CC. Because um, if it wasn't there, that baby dragon would have just sat there and wreaked some havoc. But he comes in with a few back end hogs. That one healer is still helping those Valks out. Um, he had, he brought a ton of Valks, and because of that, he can wreck this base. Maybe not not a ton of Valks, but he brought a lot. It just seems like there's a lot left up because they went through that core so quickly. Um, one thing to note though. When you're using a freeze spell, like I said before, either drop it really early so it do so the Inferno is taken out of the equation uh, for like the entire time it's up, or drop it on the Inferno that's farther away from the Valks, and you can drop it a little bit later. But you don't want to drop it too late on the near Inferno because it goes down so quickly it's just not worth it. You don't get the full value from that. So taking a look at the next Town Hall 10 3-star, we have Boom Shakalaka, and uh, this is a bit of a lower level Town Hall 10 base. This is actually one of the ones we looked at in the Fabulous Failure uh, series opener. You guys might remember that. That was the last video I think I uploaded. And you'll see that'll be true. I think I have possibly even the next two attacks. I know at least one of them is one of the bases we saw in the last video. So one cool thing is you might be able to see some of those bases um, from the fail video show up in these war recaps and see how they were actually three-starred. So kind of a base destruction type video in that sense. But yeah, taking a look at this attack, we have Boom Shakalaka, and he goes ahead and has a wall breaker fail. Um, I shouldn't say he goes ahead. He he has a wall breaker fail, uh, but I think he had an extra wall breaker uh, for another part of the base. So he goes ahead and drops that down, lets the queen on into the base here. And this one, it's a good minor base uh, because the buildings are close together. And I think I've said this before, but in, when you have a base that has low level infernos, um, this has base has low level defenses all around, but especially low level infernos. Miners can overpower a base probably better than any other troop. They're the most reliable. Um, they're not going to get 
blown up in double giant bomb explosions usually i mean sometimes they will but right here um he was trying to basically create a funnel for his miners now the miners do go to the bottom and group up with all the bowlers but it actually doesn't matter that much the queen draws most of them into the center and when you have all those miners in the center with all those heal spells um they're going to take out that base real quickly uh the king is still up and the king actually does help out the miners here because he uh takes out this trash or not the trash building but just takes out that outer layer of buildings and defenses which keeps the miners in the important part of the base which is the core because it has the infernos the teslas a lot of dps in one area so the miners stay inside the base still has one heal spell he drops that right there and it definitely helps having low level defenses because they don't do nearly as much damage to your miners so uh the miners will finish off the base here and uh, that'll be it for the three star king is actually still up one way or another along with a few bowlers even though they hit a ton of giant bombs on the outside of this base so cool that that uh worked out for him nice attack and uh taking a look at a few town hunt attacks i actually i wish i could show more attacks but i'm just busy um don't have the the time to to have a long recap so i do apologize for that but you know at least we have a video today which is something that I, i'm not sure if i can do every day uh with everything that's going on right now but uh yeah we have two more town hall nine attacks to show this one's nate and this strategy i'm not sure you know why it's one pekka uh like six to eight valks i'm not sure exactly why the numbers but this combination of troops works out really well um Basically, what happens is a queen walk uh, at the beginning. You can see he drops down a baby dragon for some funneling, I believe, and then just drops down his queen, lets her step up and take out a lot of defensive buildings. So that'll, that'll happen in just a moment. And one thing, uh, I've talked about this before, but the P.E.K.K.A. is a great funneling troop for your Valks because basically what you do is you drop down that P.E.K.K.A. As long as you take out one building, which is the army camp in this case over there, as long as you take out that one army camp, he can drop down the P.E.K.K.A. on that D.E. storage and it will just walk its way over. So the funnel can theoretically be as wide as you want, depending on how long you let the P.E.K.K.A. walk for, because the P.E.K.K.A. will typically just stay outside the base and just go from one trash building to another. So the queen kind of creates the funnel on that side. And whenever you have a base that uh, has a nice funnel kind of runway for your Valks, they are a great north to south troop, meaning they go in a straight line very well. So if you have that uh, runway set up, they can mow through a base very quickly, especially without anything on their flanks. So the P.E.K.K.A. goes down to tank, the healers on the P.E.K.K.A., it also creates the funnel. Uh, so the Valks are definitely going to the inside that first compartment. Drops down the bowlers, which also the funnel was perfect. Uh, one bowler actually does walk, but... Um, no big deal. That's actually almost a good thing because sometimes it helps keep the other bowlers inside the base along with the Valks and the King and everything. Actually, the King actually retargeted because he was going to leave the base, but that one bowler kept him inside. So actually worked out to his advantage here. But everything's moving through, just has those rage spells, um, drops them on the troops first, and then the healers kind of move up into them. So he gets the entire use of those heal of those rage spells, that is. Things kind of did exit the base eventually, but that's the great thing about this strategy is that you don't need to plan everything perfectly. As long as you get your stuff in the base, you take out the important things like the CC troops, um, the queen, that kind of stuff, and the main area of defenses. Really, this a strategy doesn't require a like a huge thorough plan like some attacks, like an air attack might where you you know want to plan out balloons for each defense. This one is a little more abstract. It's a little... Um, a little more improv, improv in that sense. So you can see, even though things kind of went wacky on him, still has the P.E.K.K.A., still has almost all his Valks, still has the King, still has the Queen, still has the Healers, still has the Bowlers. Um, insane. We'll go ahead and fast forward. It's just the Expo left up. Uh, but you can see Town Hall 9, um, they, Town Hall 9 has probably two powerful troops. And that's been the case for a long time. That's nothing new. The troops are a little bit overpowered in comparison to the defenses. So if you get a lot of those, you know, high DPS troops inside the base, they're gonna they're gonna take out the base, um, even if everything's not perfect, as long as you have a solid plan. But that being said, if something else that's you know an air attack or uh, a stoned hobo or something else is a better plan. Don't think you just have to do the power attack. Do some uh, some planning if that's the better option, but it depends on the base as does every attack. So moving on, we have Fahim at, taking on number 21. This base, I believe, also was in the last video. So what is this? Three, base, three of the four bases uh, were in the previous video. Let me know if you guys like that or if you want to see different bases. I, I mean, I don't really care. I can do either one. 
Uh, I just thought it might be cool to see a number of bases. And this actually wasn't too intentional. I just picked some cool attacks and they kind of happened to be on the bases that I had already shown. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think about that. But taking a look at this attack, does that queen walk, which I believe we saw the first attacker do, but the wall breakers go into that next compartment, one over to the left there, which is a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to drop the wall breakers into, comes in with the Valks, the bowlers, um, yeah, he did have Valks, yeah, the Valks, the bowlers, everything moving in here, you can see the queen sitting back, sniping those uh, CC balloons, uh, the king gets pretty deep into the base, that was a good jump spell, things kind of just uh, fanned out here, uh, the king taking out one area, the bowlers, the queen going to the other side, really got got the important part of the base out of the way early and you can see it has some nice back end balloons one thing we talked about on this base in the last video was how the air defenses and the queen are all in that same area so really um this is kind of a hybrid attack it just doesn't have any lava hounds just the balloons but that's all you need sometimes when you don't have any air defenses left up so perfect attack probably didn't even need the balloons um because the the kill squad was so uh perfectly uh entered into the base it probably had enough juice to take out the rest of the base, but the balloons are always a nice touch, and they are very powerful if you can get them in a place that doesn't have much air coverage. So great attack to Fahim, and he has that swag heal spell to show for it. That, hope That's it. Hope you guys liked the video. Um, like I said, let me know what you think about showing some of the, the uh, fabulous failure bases in the recaps, because these two videos might kind of be a duo that you see together where I show the fails, then I have the recap. I think that might be a cool kind of duo of videos to come out. So yeah, um, I'll try to keep the variety going as always with some live attacks, some defensive videos, all that good stuff. We should have some good wars coming up, so you guys will hopefully see some of that. And as we approach the weekend, should have uh, some little bit longer videos with some more uh, content in them. Uh, thanks for watching this one though. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.